Welcome to Marketplace with Charles, brought to you by Art of Skin Care. Art of Skin Care, the company that brings out the beauty in you, as well as Kuisa Lodge, situated at the heart of Mabalingwa Nature Reserve. If tranquility is what you are looking for, then Kuisa Lodge is the place to be. You know what? At Kuisa Lodge, you'll be sleeping, dreaming, and waking up with the big five around you. What an experience. I am Charles Ngobeni. On Marketplace, we aim to empower and equip you with the right tools that you need to grow, develop your business to what God has intended it to be. Every year, on Mandela Day, we are encouraged to give 67 minutes of our time. But some people, they go a long way, giving hours and hours. And today, I'm going to give you a snapshot of what happened on Mandela Day. The first person that you'll be listening to is Marang. What a great woman. She's going to give you tools that you need to develop your business. God bless you as you enjoy her. But my name is Marang Marikimane. I have a company called Business Process Mechanics. I am also a managing partner at a company called Lean Business Platform. We also do design thinking. Um, I also am part of an enterprise called Creative Enterprises Hub, where we assist creative entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. And I've had a lot of learnings just from even planning that. And I want to share some of those learnings with you as I go through today's presentation. But I also want to give you tools because it's, important, it's pointless for me to just give you information about these things and then you don't know where to get the tools to do it, right? Part of working with entrepreneurs, I come to realize that a lot of our ideas are like this. They're on little bits of pieces of paper. You have a diary. I see most people carrying a diary today. You're going to write all these ideas and then you're going to close this diary and then tomorrow you're going to go to another workshop or another event. You're going to open the diary again, continue with the notes. How often do you go back to the early pages in that diary? How often do you find the little pieces of paper with your ideas and actually make them into something? So this bothered me a lot when I was dealing with entrepreneurs because they would come to me and they just say, listen, I need you to help me structure my business, but here's my idea. I'm like, what must I do with all of these pieces of paper? Now we must have a conversation and we must start working on the business model. Do you know what a business model is? It's similar to a business plan. It basically says, how are you going to, what product are you making and how do you intend making money out of this product? Right? So the difference with a business plan is that a business plan will have financial projections at the bottom to then say, the money, this is where we predict the money would come from. So I then started looking for a tool that would then automate this kind of thing or make this whole th process easier. And I found the guys that were doing Lean Business Platform. So it's an existing platform. I just went and partnered with them in order to deliver it into South Africa. But this, and this uh, platform was developed in Norway. But what I liked about this platform is it really could take you from an idea point of view into developing a business model and once you've got the business model, it becomes a business management tool to make sure that you can implement that business model. Because that's another problem that I noticed is that you have the business model written down and the entrepreneurs in the room, I don't know how many of you have used business model canvas. How many? Right? We've got it on business model canvas and it's sitting there maybe in your office if you're lucky, if you're that organized. And then you walk away and then every day you do day-to-day -day tasks but you are not going back to this business model to say, am I actually delivering against what I promised myself? So this tool also then helps you to help hold you accountable. So as you can see on the board there, what it starts off with is the resources. Literally, what do you have to start this business? Instead of getting stuck off, but I don't have money, I don't have an office, you can use with what you've got as an idea. So the half-baked idea, you start with, what do I have if I'm going to execute this idea? What do I have as a resource for it? And then you go into what kind of ideas do you have with what you have? And then you build your business model. 
you do a gap analysis, which is your competitor analysis. So comparison to your competitors, what it is that you are weaker in or what it is that you are strong in. And how do you intend to close that gap? Then you do a risk analysis, so what could potentially shut down this business? And isn't as much as risks are things that could shut down your business, there are also opportunities for you to grow the business or to diversify the business in order to, as a means of you mitigating these risks. What I really, really liked is this objectives part. And this is what I'm going to focus on because the objectives and the tasks is what it, it actually takes you to deliver the business that you intend to go on to. And there's three main objectives every business owner has. One is from a competency point of view. So competency, skills, and capacity it speaks to the knowledge that you have in order to make this business grow, right? And as a business owner, if you can consistently invest in yourself and the knowledge, it makes you a better person in terms of being a better leader. You make more informed decisions about how to grow this business. But it's not just you. It is also for your staff members. Internally, what are they doing to learn not just how the business operates, but skills that they could do to either grow the business itself into other markets, better service the customer, or things that they could you learn to um, climb up the corporate ladder to get the promotions that everybody is asking for, right? The second one, it, was, it would be around your product fit. So the better you understand the market that you're servicing, the easier it is to sell to that customer the easier it is to get that, say, uh, that marketing into converting into sales for you. If you don't understand who you're selling to, you're going to be fighting a losing battle over and over again. But the reality is, from the money that you're making, even from sales, part of it needs to be set aside in order for you to then reinvest in your own business. A lot of business owners make the mistake of then blowing all this money and there's nothing left to reinvest. And then when you go look for outside capital, so if you look somebody else for funding, they say to you, but you eat all this money. You're spending all your own money here. You're not reinvesting in yourself. Why should I reinvest in you? And then it all falls apart. And then you're swearing and say, ah, but these people, they promise us money and they don't give us the money. But the reality is your own behaviors with how you are reinvesting in the business is what will also then attract other people to then reinvest, to invest into your business. So like I said, all of this talk would be useless if I didn't give you tools to make it happen. And one of the first things that a, uh, an entrepreneur invests in is a website. Very few entrepreneurs actually make the website their own staff member. Most people have a website that just advertises their products, right? One level up at best is that they are selling maybe their books or the clothes that they make or the earrings and all of their products, if, especially the physical products. That's the next best level. But what you can do is there's a lot of things that can happen on your website that act as a colleague, especially when you can't afford to hire. How many of us are struggling to hire? We wish for one more person in the business, but you actually can't afford that one more person. You can reduce your cost by making a lot of the activity actually happen online. Stuff like scheduling meetings. You don't need a PA anymore. At least you don't need a PA just to schedule your meetings. So all your appointments, you can, actually, you can have what they call a plugin onto your website that allows you to book meetings. And if you synchronize it to your calendar, it's easy. People can see when you're available. They can book to say, please call me. And they can say, rather, instead of calling me, can we meet face to face? And this is where we would like to we meet, right? Some of the other things that you can then do is then do the quotes and invoicing. I recommend something like Wave Apps. Like, I'm addicted to Wave apps. They should start paying me for, for pimping them out the way that I do. But on the website, you can actually link it there so that even if you don't have the, the online payment gateways, somebody can order a product and they can receive the invoice on the other end, make the payment, and then the, is, the receipt is issued all from Wave apps without you having to sit and intervene. Another resource that most of us need is a means of marketing and educating our customers. And honestly, Marketing is a, is, a, is a function to make sure that people are aware of your brand, right? This is why we use the social media platforms and things. But you can then drive people to sign up for newsletters. So when they get newsletters and you engage with them regularly, 
They then just say, okay, maybe I don't need the service now, but I'll need it later. And the more often you engage with them, they just say, okay, look, you know when, when you start looking forward to deliver, to getting your favorite magazine, they start looking forward to those things. And you can educate them about the products and services that you, you provide without necessarily forcefully selling to them. I had the weirdest thing last week, somebody asked for a meeting, but the email she had um, uh, at, at the bottom of it, right, the replied one, was an e a newsletter that I sent almost a year ago. And she says she saved it because she read it and she felt pain. She said, I touched on her studio. <laughs> she said, like, I'm, I felt very touched by this email when I read it, but at the time I was not ready to engage with you on this particular service, but I saved it. And now we're having this meeting and she's like, okay, now can we have it, make it happen? And I said, but why weren't you ready at that time? She said, ah, I didn't think my problems were that big. Now my problems are as big as you described them in that newsletter. So this is where it helps because people just don't forget. They become so used to getting that kind of information. And especially if your product is something that people are not used to, you have to spend time educating them. So newsletters is one way. Do you guys know what a blog is? A blog is when you've got written content, so it would be a newsletter, but you, post, you would post it on your social media, right? So it's not just a picture in five lines, but it actually tells a longer story. Typically, it's about 300 words that you would be using. A vlog is your videos, so the stuff that you would put on your YouTube channel um, counts as vlogs. Again, use it to educate your customers. Another means to do that is your webinars, which you can also embed onto your platform. So sometimes when people then go to your website, they can actually have attend a workshop without necessarily having to come to a physical space like this, without waiting for you to be booked, without you. And you can sell all of these services, right? So you can sell to say, come to this masterclass webinar. Um, Nolene could do one for LinkedIn. You know, come to a LinkedIn webinar on, online, book this slot, pay 50 bucks, and watch this. She's sleeping. She's still making money while, you, while she's sleeping. Another thing to have onto your website is what they call lead pages. So lead pages is, think of it like a flyer. It pops up onto the screen. Do you need this very quickly? Do you need this, this, this service, yes or no? Yes, I do, I'm very interested. Moment you type in your email address, it starts asking you the next question and stuff like that. And you could really say, how quickly do you need the service? Do you need, would it change your life in the next three months or six months? Oh, well, you know, I kind of need it now so that it can change my business in the next three months. Fantastic, I, how do I do this quickly? And then you lead them to the next service and then you make them buy. So you don't make the person buy instantly, but you get them into a conversation that gets you understanding the customer better, and then it flows into the eventual sale. Um, social media, why I mentioned that is that each time you post a product onto your website, if you link it onto your social media, you can then make sure that it posts automatically onto your website, so that you're not spending and, and time becomes a very crucial element as an entrepreneur. So you don't want to spend time updating your website with all of these products and then moving along to social media to post it on Facebook and then move to Twitter and whatever. Because all of those, t all of those few little minutes in between, five, ten minutes, all add up. You could have just sat and done, posted it onto your website and it goes automatically to all your social media feeds. Running affiliate programs is a very lucrative thing to do when you have a website. So if you're selling products, you can actually have people come onto your website and say, I want to be part of an affiliate program. What that means is that they become sales agents for your business and you give them commission for every sale that they make. On your website, they would have a tracking code. Each time they make a sale based on that tracking code, the money is automatically calculated and at the end of the month, whatever their commission is due is just then paid out. You just have to make sure that uh, the payment goes through. Another tool you can use onto your website to manage cash flow. How many of you have customers or even worried about customers that say, I want your product but I can't quite afford it right now? And you lose the business the moment you say, oh, well, come back when you can afford it. Person's gone. The likelihood of them coming back is slim. And mostly because they go out and they start comparing the prices. They're trying to find out who else is cheaper. There's a tool called Adabit that you can link onto your website that allows you to create lay-by services. 
Meaning the person can say, look, I can't afford it right now, but I can, you know, if I save up a thousand rand every single month, I can actually get to, that to the cost of that service. I can afford it one day. And you find people that are serv saving, uh, saving up for a service for like six months. They're still going to get the product. Unless you decide, well, you're going to discontinue the product in the meantime, but then that's where you have a service level agreement to manage those kind of things. But let people save up for those services. And it's, very, it's become very handy, especially where, right now, where pe everybody's thinking, money's tight. I can't afford everything that I need to do. I found that using the Adabit service for my business in particular, there's a third worth of customers that are sitting there waiting, and I'm just looking, I can see, like, it's like one more deposit, you are there, girl. One more deposit, you're there. But, you know, I can't keep forcing them to buy this thing. I'm happy that they've, they've committed to buying from me, and they're not looking at other competitors, but they're saving up towards that particular goal. So what I do is I give them things that they can do in the meantime to prepare for the service when they come through. Otherwise, that's me. Thank you. The Power of Women Academy is a group mentoring program for high-impact women. Women who want to change their lives and their worlds and move on to the next level. Power of Women Academy is aimed and tailored at unleashing the passion and greatness locked inside you as a woman as you walk the journey of life over the mentorship period with our team of distinguished and well-accomplished mentors from all walks of life. Our mentors are indeed destiny helpers. These mentors come to inspire you they come to encourage you, to challenge you, to teach you, to stretch you, and to empower you. They are committed to helping you fulfill your highest potential and help you birth your wildest dreams that have been placed in you by God. For more information about the Power of Women Academy, please visit www.powacademy.co.za or for inquiries, call 064-200-1545. Welcome back to Marketplace with Charles. Well, after the great Mirang, we had another great speaker as well, Modi. Modi was talking about integrity in business. Listen to him. Your life will never be the same again. Leadership is about yourself. Leadership is about the ethics. We are talking about business, but we are also talking about personality. Mandela taught us that um, politics are about the people. And if it, we are all about the people, what is it that we are when we take from the people? And sometimes we forget the signatures that sold our people to other people that are not ethical. That is why today I want to make everybody understand that morality and ethics are the biggest standards that you can have. If you are a child, I grew up in a family of 21, and even today, uh, I can say we are 21, we are 21 graduates. We never used TEFSA or any government support. Even today, when my father is not there, I'm still a child, irrespective of whatever that I can have. That is the morals that I was taught when I was still young. And the way you are seated at as a graduate or as a businessman, you must ask yourself, what is it that people buy from you about? What is it that they are buying from you? If you have got no morals, forget about business. If you have got no morals, forget about a career. Just looking at the guys that are seated at the corner. But the courage was that I'm not going to use another way. I'm going there. It's the same thing when you, you, we are at starting business and we are afraid of business to start business because we are told that SARS will uh, close you down, whoever will not fund you. But at the end of the day, business is brains. Funding is a method, is an is a, is a enhancer for business. South Africa, why we don't have uh, idols, younger people? It's because most of the people that are funded, I'm sure here even Kizito, you are experiencing that. People get funded and then they lost the morals. What is more important to understand is that South Africa is not short of money. The reason why South Africa is always having commissions is because those people have eaten our money. They would not have eaten it if it was not there. So that is why I'm saying South Africa, it has got money, but money, if you have listened to Jack Ma one day, he would have told you that most of government in Africa 
they are collapsing because money is not being used to service the poor people. It is being used to bail out the businesses that are bigger like ESCOM, where the executives are earning millions and, and, and also being corrupted to eight millions. So what is more important for us is to teach younger people to say, if you are able to, what you want to be like us one day, your career will look after you. If you want your career to look after you, be ethical and have morals. Don't lie to yourself. If you look at South Africa today, we call it the new dawn. I say it's a new hope in South Africa. Because what is it that we, we, why, what is it that we've gone through before? We have gone through an environment where when I was at school, I was mainly number one or number two from my sister. But I was learning rubbish. I was drawing frogs. I was drawing amoebas. But today, my job does not even talk to an amoeba. The only thing that I know is to protect the environment. But what is it that when I started a business, I thought about? Some of the guys that are here, we were working together in some rural areas where to talk to a white person was a sin. Until one day I said to these guys, Mina, where I come from in Venda, I never had experience apartheid in a way. So when I see a white person, I see a person. So today we are going to start behaving like human beings to each other because I've got what I call it a just cause. Just cause is the reason why I wake up every day. So some of us, the reason why we wake up every day is because our parents said we must go to school. If you like that which is purpose, that which can drive you to come to a 22 on Sloan and then come here and fail and still take money from people that is corrupted, you will close down. The fact that as a person that I'm talking to you, I've been in, in, in 14 years in business and it's because my purpose has always been that I must always drive the life of the next person so that those people can also look after themselves. The more you have got people that are dependent on you, the moment they, 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 those people, they will never want to work. Leadership must focus uh, on people more than profits. How many businesses have gone down because most uh, of man, uh, uh, their managers are looking for profits. You can get all the CEOs that were hiring and say they must go and save ESCOM, they must go and save Transnet and them. What is it that they go and say? They go and say there is no competency in this company. When this company has been running for years with the same people that were there. So how do you expect those people in, the, in your office to support you when you tell them they are, not in, in, they are not competent? It is how you communicate with your own people, how you support your own people. They say if you train them, what if you train them and they leave? But what if you don't train them, then they stay? That means they will drag your business backwards. So it is more important that you must be ready to yourself to say, all the businesses that are there, they were never there, they were never known immediately. Most of younger people today, we are talking about Apple, we are talking about um, um, you are, you are Uber and them. They did not start today and get known tomorrow. So what is it that you are doing and going and spend a lot of money in advertising when you, 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 you are being shown the easiest way of advertising? The brand Chikowa, brand Modi, this is what, uh, it was never there. For the 14 years that I've worked, it's only now that people are recognizing it, just like any other brand. One of the things that gets when you call me and say, oh, you want me to help you, people will call you and say, I've got a CK, how can you help me? I will say, I don't know. So why do you register a CK? He was explaining to you now to say, you identify opportunity, you, ad you identify the value that you can add within that, uh, that is, uh, opportunity. And what's, what makes you special? What makes those friends of yours, every weekend you are like a pest, you are going to visit a friend, I'm going to sleep at a friend. What is it that they want from you that they can't do without themselves? That means you must look at yourself and ask yourself that, what is it that am I? If I'm running a business and I'm always funded and then I lose all the money because I'm, I, my life is not disciplined. One of these statements that says, walk decisively if you want to, be, to have courage in life. It was the statement that I took from Oprah Winfrey. 
when she was going to speak at Harvard University, knowing that she was never a graduate from Harvard University. And she met her doctor as she was walking up front. Maybe the doctor realized that she's walking, being a bit afraid. And the doctor asked her to walk decisively. How many of us want to say that we want to go for interviews and we're walking like we never ate last night? How many of us, when we are going to the interview, when you are going to, to have to kill a tender, you are late and then you don't know you don't have a car and you are late, you go there, you are sweating. Who will listen to somebody sweating? So we are not organized and because we are not, we are not as decisive in what we do. So for us to be in whatever that we do, if we have papers, we will have what we call a GPS. When things are not going on properly, you will then look at yourself and say, what did I start this business for? When I started business, I never had, and I didn't have to take a loan. Business was going well all this time. But times are that sometimes business has to go down. You find younger people, when we tell you guys, there were times we had seven cars in the house and you don't even know what to do with these things. When you are broke, we can't even sell one at the same time. So when you are telling you, why do you want to do a mistake that I did when I was 27? Most of the people that we, we talk to, they say, I'm still young when they are 27. Whom did they ask who was successful at 27? Whom are you measuring your success against? I was a millionaire at 27. A millionaire only means that I got a paid million and then I could have been left with 100,000 and gave it to other people. So you get someone who has 40 cars and say, that's my idol. That to me, that is stupid. So the, most, the last part which I'm going to be saying to you is that, what is that you see when you say you want to do business? If you see a stumbling block, you have got a problem. If you see what you want, that's when you want, you will know what is it. South Africa, we keep on blaming government, this government, that we are going into fourth industrial revolution. No, we are not going. We are here. It's here. That's why today I'm talking to you, looking at you, but there is screens that are showing us here. So a fourth industrial revolution is you, and this is why you need to grow up as younger people. The reason why I feel entitled to tell you there is something that is called success. I'm running different businesses where over the last 14 years, I've had over 200 people that have worked for me, that are working all over, and I don't believe that there is competition. That's why the topic today I said, business is not finite. If you are going to try and win a game of, of business by being the best, you have failed already before you start. Thank you. You know, when you're having fun, time flies. We had so many other speakers but unfortunately, we could not fit all of them in this small segment. I hope next time I'll bring you some more. This is Charles Ngobeni signing off on Marketplace with Charles. I am available on www.charlesngobeni.com, on Instagram, Charles underscore Ngobeni, or you can go on Facebook and like me, Charles Ngobeni. I'll be happy to hear from you. I would love to interact with you. I'd love to know how the program is benefiting you. Well, God bless you. See you next time. Same channel.